oscillating electric field. And that's actually what happens. Molecules start to rotate in the presence, molecules that have a charge separation, start to rotate in the presence of microwaves. Now, rotation, as you know, is directly related to your structure. That is, if you, and you've seen this, when you see ice skaters and they uh, start to spin with their arms out, they spin slowly, but as they bring their arms in, they spin rapidly. That's because the distribution of your mass determines how easily you rotate, what your angular momentum will be. So you can actually do this with molecules. You can determine how spread out their masses are by how they absorb microwaves, how they rotate in, in space. So the bond angles and the bond lengths that you see in your textbook, many of those came from spinning molecules with microwaves. It's actually quantized. They only have certain rotational energy levels. Spinning them with microwaves and then determining what the distribution of their masses must be to give you that kind of rotational frequency. And of course, the distribution of the masses is all the nuclei. The electrons don't have a mass that really matters. So it tells you where the nuclei are. And that's what the structure is, where the nuclei are in a molecule. So that's a very interesting part. Uh, it also tells us, uh, coincidentally, why uh, microwave ovens work. Uh, so here's a little, kind of just a, a cute animation. Microwave ovens, I'll bring a water molecule up here with its plus and minus side. If you bring in oscillating radiation, that starts it rotating rapidly through space. Now, in this class, we're going to associate molecular motion with temperature. Like, that's going to be our measure of temperature. Greater temperature, greater molecular motion. So when things, molecules are moving fast, they're hot. And when they're moving slowly, they're cold. And this is how your microwave oven heats up food. It physically goes in and starts those molecules rotating, bumping into each other, smacking into each other, jostling them around, and getting more molecular motion out of your, your food and raising its temperature. So it's a very common thing uh, that we can understand just based on simple principles. Yeah? Uh, the question is, uh, radar also uses microwaves, so how do the stealth fighters absorb uh, how do the stealth fighters, uh, uh, absorb that? The question is, uh, that's classified. No. <laughs> the question is, they use a myriad of technologies. Some of them are reflected and dispersive. Some of them actually absorb the radiation, and we'll show you how that works. So you can imagine having molecules that absorb the radiation embedded in the structures. So absorbance, uh, radar works because there's a lot of reflection. What you want to do is just re minimize reflection. So if you absorb, that's great because that's not reflection, that's, that's sucking up the microwaves rather than broadcasting them back to the center. Uh, oh, this brings up an interesting point. You can look at this happening in a microwave oven. So uh, we have, if we go online, uh, a virtual microwave oven. Uh, here's one here, but you can do this uh, at home. Uh, you can take and place these you do it with your real microwave, but I can put virtual marshmallows <laughs> in, this, in this online microwave oven. And I can just display them, you know, and randomly place them throughout the, uh, uh, throughout, more in the middle. <laughs> Here, we'll put a couple in the middle for these tiny guys. Okay. There's some, uh, some, uh, Marshmallows in the microwave oven. Watch, it's interesting what happens when I start the microwave oven and turn them on. Watch what happens. Some of the marshmallows start to cook very rapidly and expand, and others cook very, very slowly. Right next to a fast one, you'll find a slow cooker. So, but you guys actually understand, and they're actually going to burn into the crispy things, the, you actually understand why this is just based on your freshman chemistry. Because what you're doing is broadcasting waves into a closed box. You're confining the waves to be within the box of the microwave oven. And what happens when you put boundaries on waves? Only certain, they'll be quantized. Only certain wave patterns will exist. You'll get only certain standing waves in the microwave oven. 
So what does that mean? There will be points in the microwave oven where there'll be nodes in the standing wave. So there'll be points where there's zero energy. Even though you're broadcasting energy in, if your marshmallow is sitting at a node, it doesn't get any microwave energy. So, pardon me? So if you have something at a node, it won't cook. And you, you know this. If you, put a micro, if you put the burrito in the microwave and you don't have it on the rotisserie, you stick it in there and you nuke it, you get it out, and one end will be like boiling and the other still frozen. <laughs> That, that's why we actually have rotisseries in microwaves these days. They move the food through the node. So nothing sits at a node and doesn't get cooked. So, uh, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're my, you're my yay, I'm glad I came today. <laughs> you, know, you know. You know what's going to happen. You're going to go home at Thanksgiving and you're your grandmother's going to say, well, what are you learning at that fancy pants Berkeley? And they're going to, you're going to say, well, I can tell you how the microwave oven works. And that will be impressive. <laughs> so let's do again with, based on this, popcorn explodes, it pops in a microwave oven because, one, corn molecules...